Bada bing, bada bam. Welcome to this week's Bake It a Mystery, Bake It a Murder video. Okay, he's having a whole rant before we even get started. He goes, are you going to give me a recap, honey? Because I don't remember a single thing that's been going on. I've lost track of time. What happened? Yeah, can you like... Sir, do you have... Can you start over from the beginning? Can you start over from episode one? We're doing part two of The Masked Girl, which is a K-drama based off of a webtoon, based off of, listen, I don't know, shared life experience. So please, if you haven't already, go watch part one of this or go watch episodes one through four. And then this will be episodes five, six, and seven. This is the finale. This is the end of The Masked Girl. Oh, this is over? Yeah. So, oh. oh yeah, we did part one maybe like a week or two ago. And let me tell you, every single night for like a week, I feel like the past few days he's been a bit better about it. He would lay in bed and go, so what happens next? And I'm like, sir, I'm not your, <laughs> I'm not your free recap machine, okay? I have my own morals and ethics. I've got my own standards. But here I am doing another recap, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. So if you guys didn't watch part one, um, let me put, the, put this video on like 1.5 speed. Okay, 1.5 speed. Click. Okay, ready? The story is about a girl named Momi who always dreamed of being this big, big star. She wanted to be a K-pop star. Her ultimate dream is people clapping, screaming, dying for her like, ah! Like, that's what she wants to hear on a daily basis. She wants to go to sleep to that noise. But she is not conventionally pretty. And this is in South Korea where conventional pretty is like everything, okay? And eventually she has to, quote, face reality. She starts working a corporate job and at night she would come home, put on this very glittery looking mask, like a shimmer, shimmer pink mask and this skimpy, skimpy little dress. She would turn on her live stream and she would start dancing to all these pop songs. It was kind of sexy. She would like pour milk all over her face and like make groaning noises. Most of her fans were dudes. I feel like that tells you enough, okay? And she would live stream herself dancing for um, just all these songs. And her identity was always kept a secret. People always felt like her face was even prettier than her body. Some people said it's probably because her face is ugly that she's not showing her face. There were speculations. Well, Fast forward, she ends up killing one of her top viewers because she realized that he just wanted to meet her in person and sleep with her. He thought she was ugly, but he still wanted to sleep with her. Her coworker Nathan finds out that she's the mask girl and helps her cover up the murder of her number one viewer. But then she realizes that Nathan, this coworker, this incel, if you will, just wants the same thing from her. He just wants to sleep with her. So she kills him. I mean, I feel like she does have some, like, anger issues she needs to address, maybe with, like, the prison psychiatrist, but we'll see if she gets there. So she kills him, gets plastic surgery all over her face, runs off and does her own thing and became known as the mask girl serial killer. The true crime channels were eating that shit up. They were like, oh, my God, she's gone. Who is she? Nathan's mom, Karen. So Nathan, the coworker, she just... Her, his mom, Karen, made it her new life mission to find a mask girl and kill her because Nathan was a mama's boy. Of course he was. And she thought that her son could do no wrong. Karen ends up tracking down Momi to a town in Korea where she's working as a dancer and escort. And another dancer named Cynthia gets involved and she's pretending to help Karen find Momi. But in reality, she's trying to protect Momi because pussy power. All of this somehow ends up with Cynthia and Momi killing Cynthia's violent boyfriend, Ben. And just as they're about to dump his body into a lake, Karen shows up, shoots Cynthia, killing her, but not before she gets knocked out herself. And all of this ends with a big reveal of Momi being pregnant, probably with Nathan's baby. We don't know, okay? We don't know what she's been doing in her free time. Giving birth, dropping off her born baby to be raised by her mother, who hated her, by the way not a great mom, and turning herself into the police as Masked Girl, the notorious serial killer, is now in jail. Dun, dun, dun. That's the recap. Oh, okay. Do you okay. remember all that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, good. Yeah. I love writing. Clearly, I have a strong love for stories. And I think sometimes, sometimes I think that I might have a good knack at telling a good story. But the writing part is what really gets me. Like, I, I wish that I just had an assistant to go in and, like, do all the technical parts. They could go in and kind of reset in some structures, maybe simplify it, maybe make it sound a little bit more professional, right? And I'm sure a ton of you students are sitting there nodding your head like, mm-hmm, absolutely. Yes, I wish I had that too. Well, let me tell you, just get an assistant.
You're like, oh yeah, so cool, so easy. Let me just do that. No, it's super easy, okay? Grammarly is an AI-powered writing assistant that helps you from start to finish. Grammarly is honestly more than just a writing assistant to me. It's like my friend. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but Grammarly can actually help you with even starting ideas, paraphrasing, citing your sources. And the best part is, I know you guys are students. You can start using it for free now. It helped me so much in being more productive because I really have all this time to focus on the stories and what I'm writing rather than making sure that every little thing is correct and that I'm citing my sources correctly. I no longer feel overwhelmed when I sit down and start writing. Everything just moves easier, quicker. It's more fluid. Even if you just need an outline, Grammarly's got you covered. You can even take your essay and prompt Grammarly to make this sound more professional or make it sound more academic or simplify it. And Grammarly will do it. I even ask for feedback. Sometimes I will ask Grammarly to provide ideas for improvement just by prompting it something along the lines of like, where am I missing evidence? Ideas for improvement. Listen, I wish I had this out as a student. So if you're a student, don't miss out. You're gonna wonder how you lived without Grammarly. Go to grammarly.com slash students to download and learn more about Grammarly. That's G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash S-T-U-D-E-N-T-S. So we're just gonna jump into episode five. Episode five has already got me hooked because we're going in with Mimo. I know, Momi is the mom. Mom, Mom Mommy. Mm. Mom, Momi. Mimo is the daughter. Mimo, yeah, is the kid, okay? And then Nemo is the fish. <laughs> <laughs> so Mimo grew up kind of like her mom. You know, she loved experimenting with makeup alone in her room, performing in front of her little mirror. She would put on eyeshadow pose, which is all normal cute stuff. But if you remember Momi's childhood, her mom hated her trying to be cute. Her mom hated her doing all of this because she just felt like she wasn't conventionally pretty enough to be an actress or a singer one day. So why even try? It's like her mom got off on trying to ruin her dreams and, quote, put her in her place. She always told Momi, you're never going to accomplish that because of your looks, so we should really focus on something else. I think in her old, you know, mean mind, she was like, I'm doing her a favor. I'm making sure that she doesn't waste her life away on a hopeless dream. So, meanwhile, Mimo's grandma would always tell her that she's so similar to her mom. In Korean, it's like, Oh, are you scared someone's going to accuse you of not being your mom's daughter? It's like you're almost trying to mimic your mom to the point where mm. no one can deny that you're your mom's daughter. Okay. And Mimo has no idea what that means because her grandma would never even talk about her mom except for like throwing away these backhanded compliments at her or not even compliments, like disses at her. She has mm. no idea that her mom is mass girl. She has no idea where her mom is. She knows nothing. Instead, she's forced to sit in these long dinners in silence, just eating grandma's cooking, which is ass, by the way. And Mimo's favorite guilty pleasure was tteokbokki harmony street food, okay? So in front of these schools, these harmonies are so smart. These old ladies put up street food carts and all the kids ask their parents for money. And then before school or after school, it's an activity for the girls or the boys to like sit and eat their little street food together. That's what she called her. The old nice lady that sold spicy rice cakes at a cart on her way to school is tteokbokki harmony. Don't you forget about tteokbokki harmony, okay? Rice cake grandma. Rice cake grandma. So in the beginning, school is pretty fun for Mimo. She's got friends. She's got a life, goals, dreams. Then one day, she's walking out of school with her little girlfriends and they're giggle gaggling and the moms run up to each of the kids and they snatch their kids' arms. Like, we gotta go, we gotta go. And it's so obvious, they clearly have something against Mimo. Like, it's not like, oh my God, we're in an emergency. Your dad's in the hospital because a dog bit off his wee-wee. Like, there's no... Mm. Yeah, <laughs> like it's not that. It's like, we got to get out of here. And they're staring at Mimo like she's disgusting, like she's covered in filth. And the friends are like, Mom, stop. I was going to go eat tteokbokki with Mimo. Like, leave me alone. Don't ever play with Mimo again. You're forbidden. And as they're walking away, Mimo's in shock. And she hears the mom say, her mom is mask girl. The, the friends are like, what's mask girl? Don't ask questions. Let's go home. So that night, Mimo went online to search up Mask Girl. And that is how she discovered that her mom is a serial killer that went to jail for a very, very, very long time. Now, I don't know, okay? Because Mimo's way of coping with this realization, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. But like, I'm sure some psychiatrists can tell me that it's normal, right? She would straight up dress up like Mask Girl. She would wear the mask that Mask Girl wore. <laughs> Or, yeah, or like a slightly different mask. She would stare into the mirror and point her finger at herself and say, murder. 
<laughs> and then she would go lay in bed and pretend to choke herself because that's how she thinks that she killed Nathan. Yeah, oh. and then she would kind of like pretend to be Mask Girl and then pretend to be Mask Girl's victim. She would even jump on her bed wearing a giant bra because Mask Girl is known for her big, big, <laughs> big tennis, right? And with the mask on saying, you can all take t pictures now. I am Mask Girl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure there is a psychological reasoning behind her actions, but this is a fictional show. So we're not going to dive too deep into like, you know, the trauma, but it's a it's a very interesting way of processing such such information. And just imagine the fear, the shock when grandma slams open the door and she sees little Mimo with the mask, giant bra saying, I am mask girl. Her uh, how eyes. How old is she? She's like seven. Oh my God. Her eyes are like popping out of her head. She's screaming, have you lost your mind? Grandma grabs her hand, drags her out of the house, past the gate, and slams it shut on her. Mimo, seven-year-old, is being kicked out. And she's crying. Hey, money, please. Grandma, please. I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. Like, which means, I, I, I'm so sorry. I did something wrong. I did something wrong. And Grandma says, I cannot raise you. I don't have it in me. Get out of here. Hey, money, please. And Mimo falls to her knees outside the gate and she's sobbing. She stays there on the concrete all night long, even when it starts pouring rain. But it does seem like grandma has some sort of love for the child, okay? Because she eventually comes out, picks her up from the rain, washes her, puts her in bed, puts a heater close to her, starts putting towels on her forehead to make sure that she doesn't catch a cold. So she's like, Harmony, she w she's waking up. Yes. What kind of person was my mom? She was, she was a lost cause from the start. And Mimo's life does not get any better. She doesn't hear more about her mom. The only thing that she knows about her mom are the things that she's reading online. Because like I said, grandma still won't tell her anything about Mask Girl or her mom or her crimes. Or like even try to explain why she might have done something. Nothing. So at school. The rumors are spreading fast that her mom is mask girl. And it was spread by the person that was the closest to Mimo, her best friend. Her mom had told her best friend that her mom is mask girl. And now her best friend's going around telling everyone, my mom telling me that Mimo's mom is mask girl. Mm. And the very first time it happened, Mimo confronted her best friend in the playground and punched her in the face, decked her in the nose. She was expelled from school very quickly after. And Mimo's grandma actually backed her up. She got up in the principal's office and she said she straightened up her shoulders without any shame, without any apologetic feelings, with no remorse. And she said, well, we were thinking about moving somewhere else anyway. Good riddance. And walked out of there. They moved and Mimo was enrolled into another school, but it's like only a matter of time. Everywhere she goes, she doesn't even know how, but they always found out that her mom is mask girl. And every single time, Mimo just felt rage. She felt rage that her life was being ruined by something that her mom did, not even something that she did. She felt rage that her grandma didn't fill this void in her heart and try to support her through this tough time. And she felt rage that not a single person saw past what her mom did and befriended her. So yeah, sometimes she stabs some of the kids with pencils, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah, which like, okay, is that the best thing that she could have done? Arguably, maybe not. But Mimo is, is in a very tricky situation, a precarious situation where she has to be even less violent than every other kid her age, which violence is never okay. But when other kids push and shove, they're just being kids. When Mimo does it, oh my God, it's in her genes. Oh my God, the serial killer is in the genes. It's in the blood. It's in the DNA. She gets it from her mom, right? So the videos of her slapping and stabbing kids, it kind of goes viral, yeah. Oh like gosh. it's shared into all these PTA uh, group chats in the area because parents are freaking out that Mimo is going to be sent to their school. Now, fast forward to 2023. Mimo is about middle school age, about to be high school, like eighth grade, I would say. Mimo's life is spiraling out of control. She is the epitome of angsty, angry teenage kid. Her grandma is getting more and more frail and her whole retirement has been spent trying to keep, keep Mimo out of juvie. That's like the only thing that she's doing. So in one particular instance, you know, grandma asked her, do you want to grow up just to be like your mom? 
and Mimo is feisty. She's staring her down. Okay, so imagine the kids that have no emotion. They don't even scream. They don't even cry. She just likes to deroba, which is um, laser eye, like stare at people and say mm -hmm. really snarky things. You know what I'm talking about? Those yeah. kids. That's Mimo, okay? And she would say, don't ever call her my mom again. That woman is nothing to me. Mima goes to her room, slams the door shut. And the next school that Mimo is transferred to, she gets seated next to a girl named Yeti. Yeti is your quintessential nerd. Like that, that kind of girl that the popular girls like to poke fun at. She tries to sit with the popular girls at school during lunch. Like she understands that nobody wants to be her friend, but she doesn't stop trying. So she'll literally go up in the cafeteria, go up to the popular kids, slam her food tray down and be like, did you guys see the new music video from NCT? Ah, they're my opas. My heart almost stopped. Someone's sitting there, Yeti. There's Yeti no or? Yeti. Yeti, oh. Someone's sitting there, Yeti. There's no assigned seats at lunch. Come on, girls. Let's talk about the new video. Get up. That's her fucking seat. Stupid girl. And they're like so mean to her. But Yeti's like trying to play it cool. She looks up at the popular girl waiting to sit in her seat. And she's like, <laughs> okay, well, I'll see you guys later. And she grabs her food and walks off and realizes that every single seat in the lunchroom is taken and everyone is deep in their conversations except the one seat right next to Mimo. She hesitates before she pushes up her chin and puts her tray on the, on the table. Are you eating alone? I'll eat with you. Okay. You're welcome. Mimo doesn't even respond. She doesn't even look up. And Yeti continues. Hey, you. You. Come closer. I have something to tell you. Mimo does not react. You know you're totally an outcast, right? Finally, Mimo looks up. What? I'll be your friend. For you, of course. No, thanks. What? I said I don't need shit like friends. So after school, Mimo's walking out of class, enjoying the breeze, when, what was that? It's Yeti running up to her. Yeah, yeah. She's running. She's trying to keep up with Mimo's fast walking, and she's digging in her backpack. Which idol is your favorite? Do you want to buy one of these photo cards? I waited super long in the, long, uh, super long in the lines to get them signed. Hey, yeah? Will you just um fuck off? So I'm going to give you the breakdown of Mimo's trauma, okay? So welcome to Trauma Recap Corner. Please email me your trauma and I will rate it 1 through 10. I'm kidding. Don't email me your trauma. I'll be so sad. But let me give you a tiered list of Mimo's life trauma, okay? Firstly, she hates making friends because inevitably they all betray her when they find out that she's Mask Girl's daughter. They abandon her and they even go as far as to spread rumors about her. She hates any celebrity that gets plastic surgery. She will literally be one of those profile picture list accounts that comments, what does this Botox filled bitch have to say about climate change? Like she's like one of those people. Okay. She'll even comment things like, have you seen this girl's high school pictures? She's so ugly. She hates anyone with mm. plastic surgery. Anyone who cares about being pretty. She hates it. Wow. Yeah. And on top of that, she has major mommy issues. She actually gets excited to receive cacao talks from Tokpuki grandma, the old grandma that used to sell street food for her at her first school that she was expelled from. She's like constantly looking for this mother figure just about anywhere. Now, here comes the character arc. After school one day, Mimo sees Yeti being bullied by the popular girls and they accuse her of being a lying slut. <laughs> I hate, I hate school, okay? They accuse her of autographing the idol photo cards herself and trying to sell them to people in the school. And they keep saying, every time this bitch opens her mouth, she's fucking lying. So they don't really like her, okay? But this is not like the glory. I'm not talking like curling iron bullying type of trauma. I'm talking like, um, they're just kind of like poking your head. They're like, why are you lying all the time? You know, that kind of stuff, right? You get what I'm saying. So she's kind of being pushed around the bullies and Mimo is not having it. She's not even um, trying to play like Miss save -a from a childhood trauma type of incident. She's just observing the bullies and she's like, get lost. And the bullies are like, no, you get lost. Stop lurking around. And there's like five bullies, right? 
And Mimo's kind of pissed off. She's looking for a place to place her anger. Oh, it's in her soul. So she grabs this picture of her frame, smashes it on the ground, grabs a piece of glass shard, and holds it so tight that her blood starts dripping out of her hand. And she says, hey, fucking dipshits, do you guys want to get stabbed? So like I said, you know, we're not dealing with the glory type of bullies. We're dealing with some like loser bullies. So they're fucking scared. They scurry off like little rats in a New York City alleyway. And yet he runs up to Mimo. Oh, my God. Why did you do that? Are you okay? She grabs a tissue and starts putting it on Mimo's hand where the blood is. And I thought, I thought Yeti's a little weird, right? Yeti like really wants friends. She's Maybe she's going to be like a cute character on the show, though, right? Yeti notices that Mimo has these self-harm marks on her wrist. So that night, she goes home, and she's sitting at her desk with like a box cutter, and she's like breathing really hard. And she's so scared of pain, and she tries it. She tries it herself, yeah. And when she gets to school the next morning, she's so freaking proud. She waltzes straight up to Mimo and holds out her wrist and says, Look, you and I have a lot more common than you thought, huh? (laughs) <laughs> wow yeah and she's showing this tiny little scratch on her wrist with this big old smile on her face and Mimo's looking at her like you're psychotic I am so terrified of you okay you might be scarier than my mom she even follows Mimo to the bathroom and Mimo is trying so hard to get rid of this girl and she's like attached herself like a barnacle on a ship that's not going anywhere and we get the friendship arc okay the Side note, the friendship arc also kind of merges into a first love arc. I'm not sure if the webtoon is any different, but it does seem like the two have a relationship or a budding relationship that seems like they're more than just friends. Even the kids at school whisper about how they're obsessed with each other, how they were caught making out and stuff. But let me just give you the rundown on how it happens. The two are eating street food after school and playing at the playground or really just like sitting there being angsty middle schoolers when Yeti blurts out, I want to kill my mom. What? Hmm. I know, sometimes I think about killing my mom. What? Why? A few weeks ago, I brought home a stray kitten, and I mean, obviously it was in bad condition, and I wanted to save the kitten, but my mom screamed at me to take the kitten back to where we found it, and that we couldn't take care of it. I bet that kitten is now dead. There's no way that it survived. In my eyes, my mom very well killed that kitten. And Mimo's looking at her like, that, that's it? What? What do you mean that's it? (laughs) Never mind. Forget it. Mimo starts walking off and Yeti's screaming behind her. Where are you going? Wait, stop. Wait up. Wait up for me. What? I can't even tell you things like that when we're supposed to be friends. How many times do I have to tell you I don't need friends? I just want to get through school and graduate, okay? Wait, you never tell me about yourself. I was just trying to be friendly and make conversation. Like, what is wrong with you? You want me to talk about myself? Yeah, forget it. You wouldn't even be able to understand. And Mimo starts walking off and Yeti's screaming after her. Hey, stop walking away from me. You think that I don't understand? Huh? Like you think you're the only one with problems? You know what I hate? I hate when my dad comes home drunk and beats my mom. I took a knife and almost stabbed him once. Did you know that? You think you're the only main character with a sad life, huh? Everybody has problems. Mimo seems taken aback for a second. But before she can even respond, it starts raining and Yeti practically grabs her hand and starts dragging her to find shelter. They're running in the rain. They get back to school out of breath. They're giggling. And once the laughter fades, Mimo says, does your dad get drunk often? Yeah, I wish he would just die, you know? (laughs) And my mom, actually, my mom's not even my biological mom. She's my stepmom. Well, you're better than me. Huh? You promise you won't tell anyone? Of course. The two pinky promise, and Mimo says, I don't even know who my dad is, and my mom's in prison. Prison? She's never even reached out. She doesn't even care to get to know me. She's not even a little bit curious about her own kid. I've never spoken to her. Wait, then who do you live with? My grandma. Your grandma doesn't tell you about your mom? No, she hates talking about my mom. It was probably all my fault. Yeti is silent for a second. And then she, boop, kisses her on the cheek. Hey. (laughs) And Yeti goes, you're really special, you know that? Could you be more cheesy? 
But the thing is, this is where things get very interesting, okay? So after the rain quiets down, Yeti goes home, and I'm expecting a drunk dad, an evil stepmom. I'm talking like Cinderella-level stepmom, right? That is also a victim of the dad. That's what she said. That's what she said, right? Wrong. Her family is actually super cute. They're not super well off, but they're super cute. They're grilling up KBBQ in the living room floor, all because Yeti mentioned a few days ago that's what she wanted to eat. And she talks back to her parents. Like, if I talked to my mom like this when I was a kid, I probably would have gotten in big trouble. She's slamming the bedroom door, refuses to eat dinner, and her parents don't even scream at her. They don't even scold her. They don't even seem like normal Korean households. They seem like gentle parenting households, which is not really the normal Korean household, yeah. So she lied? Yes! Oh my god. Yes! And yet he slams the bedroom door shut and starts texting Mimo. She plops on the bed and starts angrily texting Mimo. I hate being home. My dad's drunk and violent again. I'm just hiding in my room right now. I'm just glad I have someone to talk about this stuff with, though. But the dad's making barbecue right now. Bro, in the background, you hear Yeti's parents like being cute and making each other barbecue sun wraps. Uh-huh. And then warning the other kids, like, blow on it. It's hot. The, the, the food is hot. It's just off the grill. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Imagine that's your kid, babe. Bro, imagine. <laughs> your kid goes to school. My mom beats me every day. She starves me every day. She I used hate to her. run this true crime channel, and I think I'm going to be her next victim. <laughs> but like, okay, fine. It's weird. But maybe she just really, really wants friends. And like, I can kind of relate to that, right? And she's not going to betray our girl Mimo because she finally has a friend. This is the drama where dreams and hopes find a plot of land, and they bury themselves in graves. This is a graveyard of dreams, so I don't think that's going to happen. We see a montage. This is when you know shit's about to go fucking down. When you see montages, and like the sun is streaming in, and they're riding a singular bike together, and they're like holding on to each other's backs, someone's going to fucking die. Like K-drama, you see two people, a couple on a bicycle, one of them is dead in the next episode. I guarantee it. I promise you one thing. One of them is about to start planning a funeral, okay? So we see a montage of them running around, jumping up and down, saving each other from bullies, giggling in cat class, being scolded by the teachers and finally she asks hey i've been meaning to ask why is your mom in prison oh she killed someone what Mimo stops walking and she looks like she kind of regrets saying it what do you think i'm some sort of monster too uh no no i don't besides it's whatever. My dad went crazy again yesterday. Went around breaking everything, including all the dishes. My mom left the house crying. Such a mess. Mimo looks at her and says, Do you want to run away with me? Run away? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. But we need some money. I don't have money. Do you have money? No, but I'm sure we can start making money now. So it's settled. They're both going to make some money. And Yeti seems more invested in this plan. She starts secretly selling furniture from her family home, which is a very short-sighted plan. Like I'm talking at one part in this episode, her parents are asking her, have you seen the baby chair, the high chair? And she's like, no, what are you? T- Why, how would I know, mom? And she's like slamming the door. And her mom is like, oh my God. And the fucking stroller is gone. They're like losing their minds. It's gone because she sold it. She wants to sell her autographed idol cards too that she signed herself. So she's not really like the most likable character. She's pretty bratty to her parents, even though they're really nice to her. It's kind of the juxtaposition of Mimo just wanting a parent, just like one singular caring parental figure in her life. And Yeti has both and she doesn't even care. She wants to be as tortured and as traumatized as Mimo so that she can have a friend. Side note, she Googles killers whose kids are in school and she finds the mass killer and she thinks it's really cool. She actually tells her little infant sister about it while she's feeding her yushik, which is like food. And she's like, or yushik. And then she's like, oh, I just feel bad for Mimo, you know? Like her mom is mass killer. But you can't tell anyone. Anyway, she wants to run away with me. So the both of them try to save up as much as they can. And after a week, they have a grand total of 37 dwellers. (laughs) 
Yeah. Bro, do you remember remember being a kid and like one dollar seems so hard to make? <laughs> Where you're like, even just one singular dollar for the vending machine, I gotta put in so much work. <laughs> I'm not saying the value of a dollar is nothing, but it's just like when you're a kid, one dollar, you might as well give me a goal of being a Fortune 500 CEO. Yeah. Like it just feels so incredible, okay? Yeah. And so they have $37 and they work their fucking ass off for like a <laughs> week for $37. And Mimo even offers to ask Tokpuki grandma for money. And Yeti is like, who's Tokpuki grandma? Oh, she's this nice grandma that used to run the street food um, stand next to my old school. She texted me saying that if I ever need help, I can always ask her. Well, I mean, I, th I still think that we can do it on our own. I gotta go. I'm gonna go sell one of my photo cards, but by the end of the week, if we still don't have more money, maybe we can reach out to Tokpuki Grandma. So she goes into an alleyway to sell these photo cards to an elementary school kid. And the bullies come up and they're like, yeah, what are you doing? Selling fake, ID at, like, fake idol cards to elementary school kids? You're ripping off elementary school kids? As an only, you should know better. And they tell the little elementary school to scram, get lost. And they start kind of beating up Yeti, but not harshly. You know, it's not the glory, just like a little, like a little bump and scratch. I don't even think it's going to bruise. And one of them is about to slap her when she says, hey, you better not hit me or else your life's going to be in danger. Are you fucking stupid? You want to get slapped again, huh? And she grabs her hair, Yeti's hair, and is about to slap her when Yeti screams, do you even know who Mimo's mom is? Ah. Uh... What? Is her mom some sort of Tebar billionaire or something? <laughs> no. Her mom and the scene cuts. So we don't know what she says. Oh my God. But we do see Mimo at a cafe trying to steal an unattended laptop because in Korea, let me tell you, let me tell you the joys of Korea because sometimes I shit talk my motherland. Well, is this my motherland? I was born here. No, my mother's land is South Korea. <laughs> Whatever, okay? Sometimes I should talk, but I be telling you, okay? You go to a cafe or a restaurant, people will leave their phone, their full MacBook Pro 2023, just on the table, no theft. People will leave their purse on the chair, no theft. Designer Chanel purse, no theft. Because the country is covered by security cameras. Yeah, the country is covered by security cameras and theft is like a really shameful crime. Yeah. Yeah, and like people really shame you for stealing stuff. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. like very um social outcast vibes. Like, ugh, you had to steal something. You must be so miserable. Like that's the vibe, right? So there's not like a lot of theft in Korea. Anyway, she sees one of these attend unattended laptops and she grabs it. And as she's about to walk out that cafe door, a hand comes on her shoulder. Lady, what are you doing? Then she's in the police station. Oh. And grandma comes running through the door and walks straight up to Mimo and slaps her across the face. I told you, this was the last time. Pack your stuff and leave my house immediately. I had no intentions of ever going back in the first place. What did you just say? Mimo runs out crying and she tries to call Yeti. Hello? What are you doing right now? Uh, I'm just home. Can I come over today? What? My house? And she hears her parents like having a little cute blast in the back. <sighs> w w why? I just can't go home. Just one night and then I l I'll leave, I promise. Just one night. I really wish you could, but my dad's drunk again. It's a mess here. God, I wanna run away too. Oh, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine, but just go home tonight, and then we can run away when we're ready, okay? I'll see you at school tomorrow. So Mimo hangs up, and she breaks into the school, because this is where she's going to sleep. So she sleeps on her desk. The school security is not that great, yeah, in Korea. Oh, so this is nighttime. Yeah, she breaks into the school. And there's nobody in the school. No one, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Because I guess, like, who's going to rob a school, right? Yeah. Maybe they will. I'm <laughs> thinking about all the people that might have robbed a school. I'm so sorry, no offense, but like, why'd you do that, right? Um, yeah, so she breaks into the school. She sleeps there on her desk, and the next morning she wakes up to give herself a dry shower. Is that what it's called, where you get like the wet cloths from the sink and you kind of like mm. rub your body, right? And that's when she hears kids coming into the restroom. Because this is crazy. Did you know in Asian schools, students have to fucking clean shit? <laughs> 
Oh, like do cleaning work, right? Yeah. So yeah. like every kid is in charge of cleaning work. So in Korea, sometimes you're in charge of like cleaning bathroom A or bathroom B and mm-hmm. you like go in groups and you clean it up. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting, but I think it, it does teach a level of cleanliness and like responsibility as a kid. I yeah. think I like it. Anyway. And that's when she hears kids coming into the restroom to clean and they're whispering, did you hear that Kim Mimo girl that just transferred? She's the serial killer's daughter, mask girl. <gasps> Who's mask girl? The psycho killer? Do you know why she got transferred here? No. She stabbed a girl in her class and got expelled. Oh my god. Oh, that's so gross. Like, we're going to the same school as a psycho killer's daughter? How's that fair for us? I know. My mom said that she's filing a formal complaint with the board. Mimo runs out. She's pissed. She's strutting down the hall right out of the school. And she's not going to sit here for another single day before she gets expelled. So she leaves school. She's not coming back. She's like, why sit around just so I can get expelled? I've been through this game again, right? So she leaves. Grandma ends up coming to class that day looking for her because she didn't come home last night. So Mm. it does seem like grandma cares. It seems like grandma's saying all this shit. She cares in a very Korean way where she cares that they're alive, but she doesn't care to help them psychologically, which is super Korean. Yeah, sure. Like, I want to feed you. I want to house you. I want to make sure that you're physically fine, but I don't want to address any psychological problems you might be having. Very traditional Korean grandma vibes, right? So her grandma's looking for her. She genuinely looks very worried. So it's like, I don't know. I have very mixed feelings about her. Maybe because I I know that Korean stereotype. Grandma seems like she cares. And the teachers even pull Yeti out of class to ask her, have you seen Mimo? Do you know where she's gone? She's like, I don't know. So after school, we see Yeti running to all their favorite spots looking for her. But Mimo's not there. And Yeti just feels so heartbroken. She won't even pick up Yeti's calls. And as she's walking home, her phone is basically glued to her eyeballs. And she runs into her parents almost right outside her house. And they're like, Yeti, what's with the long face? Did something happen at school? Hey, I got you fried chicken. You said you wanted fried chicken last night. So we're going to have a chicken party. We can do a chicken party every day for our favorite daughter. Who said this? The dad. Okay. She's a very wholesome family, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. And Mimo is standing on the side, hidden by a vending machine. She was waiting to confront Yeti. And now this is a double whammy, a double slap in the face. Not only did Yeti probably tell everyone what her mom did, but she lied about her family. Oh, my God. She's got loving parents. They were never the sob story she gave, that fake story. And she doesn't even realize how lucky she is. We always see those videos of those financial experts that are like, if you only drink coffee at home and stop buying lattes, you can save this much every single year. Sir, sir, sometimes that latte is the only good thing of my day, okay? It is the only thing that I'm looking forward to all day long. Excuse you. Which is why a little extra money helps everyone just live their best life. And Chime's online checking account is here to help you live yours. With Chime's online checking account, you can enjoy a ton of perks like fee-free overdrafts up to $200. You can even get paid two days early with direct deposit. So yes, get that latte because you deserve a bit of happiness in your day. I always recommend Chime to my friends and they love the feature of getting paid two days earlier because two days can really make a difference. With a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. And fee-free overdraft with SpotMe is a lifesaver. So just set up that qualifying direct deposit sign up for spot me and chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a purchase that exceeds your balance chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees and you get access to 60,000 fee free atms that's more than like the top three national banks combined and you can send and receive money easily through chime no matter what bank your friends use and you can even cash out your money fee free Signing up for Chime takes minutes. So join the millions of other Chime members and sign up today. Get started at Chime.com slash baking. That's Chime.com slash baking. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA, members FDIC. Eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Access to direct deposit up to two days early depends on the timing of the submission of the payment file from the payer. Out-of-network ATMs withdrawal fees may apply. Yeti finally gets a call that night from Mimo to meet at their favorite secret spot. And she's crying. How could you do this to me? Like when Yeti gets there, Mimo is crying at her. Like, how could you do this to me? What? What are you talking about? You're the one that spread the rumor. What rumor? I didn't 
do anything. You spread the rumor about me and my mom. How could you do this to me? She pushes Yeti on the ground and we just see her in the shadow of this tunnel beating her up. Oh my God. And at the very end of the alleyway, there's a shadowy figure watching them. They slowly turn to the camera with a big old smile. It is a random grandma. Hmm. Wait, a grandma was watching them two fighting? Oh yeah, and she's smiling. Okay. A random grandma. Huh. Meanwhile, Momi, the mom, the mask girl, okay, is in prison. Now let's take it all the way back to the first day she was arrested. Why is she? In, why did she turn herself in though? I guess she didn't want to be on the run. Huh. Okay. Maybe some people just. I can't deal with being on the run. Back to the first day she's arrested. She's being transported to prison, forced to spread her cheeks and bend over to see if she's hiding. You know, I don't know a set of lock picking keys up her hoo ha. Which I googled, okay? I'm like, why would they do that in prison? Because I'm thinking, what could I possibly have hidden in there that you need to so invasively have me bend over and like spread them wide and then like stick around, poke around, like microscope in there? What could I possibly hide in there? I don't even think I could hide much in there, right? I googled it. (laughs) Yeah, I googled like craziest things people have hidden in their hoo-ha. A a woman in Texas was arrested for hiding a loaded gun up in there. A loaded (laughs) gun. (laughs) Not even unloaded, like loaded. I don't even think the safety was on. So just one kegel away from shooting herself. (laughs) Yeah, it's like playing with fire, first of all. Second of all, I just imagine her lifting her leg and it's like, boom, you're dead. She just shot you. (laughs) (laughs) Pop it a squat, boom, shot. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, pistol pussy power. (laughs) Okay, so Momi was searched thoroughly before being thrown into her cell. And they're like, meet your new cellmate, mask girl. And the cellmate looks kind of crazy. She's got that crazy hair and the crazy eyes. She's been here way too long. <laughs> you were on TV, weren't you? Mask girl, right? Hey, you got prettier in person. She gets up in her face inspecting her. Wow, I can't even tell that you had your whole face done. That's what they said, they, that you ripped your part, your whole face and stitched it back together. I can't even tell that you had any plastic surgery done. Come on, spell. How much did, how much did you spend? Huh? 30K? 40K? How much? 30,000. The cellmate runs straight to the door and screams out the bars, 30,000! And everyone starts going, ah, shit, I lost the bet. I thought it was like 50. Some of them are going, I I guess 10. So they were betting on this, okay? Bro, Every- <laughs> so bored. <laughs> yeah, everyone in the cell start gossiping. I mean, not bad. I bet I, if I had that kind of money, I would look pretty too. She rushes back to Momi's face. Eyes, nose, that's a given, right? Cheekbones, forehead, did you shave your chin? Mommy has a blank stare and she just slowly nods. What else? Boobs? Boob job? These are mine. She runs to the door and yells through the parts, everything but the boobs! (laughs) (laughs) So that day in the yard, it's prison free time. It's arts and crafts time for angry people of the population, okay? Mask girl is kind of fitting right in. She's giving free consultations of plastic surgery to every inmate. So each one gets in front of her. She analyzes their face. Um, I'd probably recommend a facelift. Um, cut the sides of your eyes to widen them. Fill there for your cheeks to lift them up. And what is going on? Maybe a little bridge for your nose. And the lady that's in front of her face looks like a true born gangster. And she goes, so you're saying everything. I should get everything done. I guess. All the women around laugh. And it just feels like all in good fun. Okay. Until one of their backs stiffens and she puts her hand up to her mouth and blows. <laughs> And most of them disperse without even letting Mask Girl know what's going on. Mask Girl is alone and her cellmate stays and sits next to her. And she's like, what the fork is going on? Her eyes scan the yard and she sees the door open and four people strut in. Each group of prisoners that these four people walk past, they kind of like bow their heads. They avoid eye contact. So immediately you're like, that's the head bitch in charge. Okay, that's the pocket I'm going to be holding if I'm in prison because I'm a weenie baby. I'm oh, a weenie it's baby. another prisoner? Yeah, it's, an, it's a, four pr- a group of four prisoners. Uh. Yeah. That right there, queen bitch. 
Three of her side girlies were the muscles of the operation. It's interesting because Queen Bitch doesn't even look like she should be in prison. Not that there's a look, but she's giving like strong um, either church minister vibes or CEO vibes. She doesn't even give me like proper mom, like Ajuma vibes. Just mm. gives me like strong corporate America vibes. Mm. Mask girl's cellmate whispers, don't stare, don't stare. Who is that woman? It's Eleanor. That's the king of the place, okay? She even has the warden in her pocket. She's got tebars, billionaires, conglomerate leaders, politicians, all in her pocket. If she likes you, you can even get out early. All she has to do is put in a good word. Really? Stop, stop looking. You know, she even has a facialist come in every week to do her skin. Even shamans, if she calls them in, they'll come in and do rituals for her. How did a woman like that get in here? Mm-hmm. Conspiring to commit murder, she hired a guy to chop up her husband and his mistress into small pieces. She was caught. Husband survived. Mask girl looks over and Eleanor has two fingers in the air. And is bending them. Like, come here, little bitch. To mask girl? Yeah. Honestly, kind of disrespectful if you ask me. I don't know if I would stand for that in public with my freedom, with the police on speed dial. But if I was in prison, I would get up and run there, okay? <laughs> I'd get up and run. I would strut my stuff. I'd bow 90 degrees. Anyway, Eleanor's calling you. The cellmate jumps up and leaves, and Mask Girl sits there for a full moment, staring at Eleanor, wondering, what does this lady want to do with me? And she slowly gets up and walks over. And Eleanor says, are your legs injured? I'm sorry? Are your legs injured? You're dragging them while you're walking here. Eleanor gets up to be eye level with Momi. You're mask girl, huh? Yes. Eleanor lifts her hand and slaps her across the face and the force makes Momi topple over onto the ground. Way too fucking similar. Way too fucking similar to the bitch that seduced my husband. So get lost. Stay out of my eyesight unless you want a new face. So for lunch... Everyone gets in line, cafeteria style. The lunch ladies are schlopping down the food that they need to eat for the day. And the girl in front of Mask Girl gets zero food. So each lunch lady that she comes across, she's like, please, please, please. And they go, get lost. Keep going. Keep it moving. And Momi is so curious. She turns to her cellmate and says, why doesn't she get any food? She's in prison for adultery. It's a rule from Eleanor. Anyone in here for adultery must starve for three days. Momi gets her food and waltzes over to where the starving girl is sitting and she sits down in front of her with a full plate of food and where everyone can see her, she starts sharing half her food. Her new cellmate warns her, your life is about to get exhausting, don't do that. It's fine. I don't think it's gonna be fine. She's so scared that she gets up and leaves while Eleanor stares down Mask Girl who's just chowing down on her food with this adulterer. You just know Eleanor is going to send her the three minions to fuck up Mask Girl, okay? When she's on work duty, Mask Girl is working the laundry. She's washing all the uniforms. The door, the door slams open. The other workers, the prisoners and the guards, they're all sent out. Momi turns around and now she's just alone standing in front of the three fucking minions. Of course, Eleanor's not there. She doesn't involve herself in the dirty work. They sneak upon her. And she stares at them before leaning down to get back to the laundry machine. And they shove her into an open wa washing machine. Oh, shit. They keep sing-songing that her whole face is plastic, that she's ugly. Her head is as shiny as an apple. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like saying really degrading things. And the minions are all laughing. And they're like, stay in your own lane unless you want to get fucked. Momi gets up out of the washer and stares at them. What the fuck are you staring at? You want me to make your face all crooked again? Mommy walks up, puts her face right up to Minion 1's. This Minion 1 is the very vocal one. She's the one that's like, duh, 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 duh. right? I said, stay in your lane, mask girl. And if I don't, <sighs> this fucking bit. Before she can say anything, Mommy pulls her head back and slams it against Minion 1's face, sending her flying back. She jumps, straddles her, and starts fucking her up. Even when the other two pull her off, she gets right back and starts biting Minion 1. The way that she's fighting this girl is like a dog on a mission is the only way I can explain it. It's not even a normal fight that you would see in the dramas where she's taking on three people. It's like the other two Minions are pulling her back, and she's like needs to be chained to stay away from minion one. 
That's she's laser focused on Minion One and beating her up. So they can't overpower her. They do. They beat her up, and、oh. by the time that she's thrown into solitary confinement, oh, she's like busted. She can't even walk on her own. She spends two weeks in there, and then she's released back to her cell at night. Her cellmate flips over on the top bed, top top bunk. I told you to keep it low key, mask girl. The key is to not stir shit up, you know. Be quiet and just get out on good behavior while you're still young. It's the only option. You know what they say: the nail that sticks out is bound to get hammered. Does Mask Girl listen to her? No. The next day, when Mask Girl spots the minions, she goes into attack mode like a crazy dog. Literally, a dog on a mission. Doesn't matter if she's being kicked or drugged. She's only wanting to beat up Minion One. The other two minions are invisible to her. She wants to fuck up Minion One. So this time again, she's all beaten up by the time that she's thrown into solitary. And when she's released two weeks later, she joins everyone in the cafeteria. She grabs her food. And starts walking, and we see her feet walk faster and faster, and she, like, kind of hangs her tray so all the food slops down onto the ground, and she's running towards Eleanor and her minions now, and she uses her food tray to smack Minion One across the face and、oh, starts、shit. going fucking <gasps> at it again, and everyone's screaming, and every other prisoner is like, "This girl is crazier than we thought." Like imagine spending time and time again, getting beaten up, spending time in solitary, and you cannot give this up. This is not a normal human train of thought. Even these criminals are like, you know what? Probably after two weeks in solitary, I'd keep it low key. Yeah. But no, no. Everyone has to pull her off, and she's sent back into solitary confinement. And then. But she only attacks Minion One. Only Minion One. Not、uh, Eleanor. No. Huh. Because Minion One is the one that shoved her in the laundry machine, I guess. Oh. Okay.、Yeah. She's released two weeks later. It's laundry day for the prisoners. They're all hang drying their sheets in the yard. Okay, Mommy gets released and she starts smiling as she goes through the sheets looking for her target. Once more, this is like fucking three months, y'all. Three months of this shit on repeat. Just imagine how crazy this is. Everyone is fucking terrified of her, <laughs> and. Each time that she comes for the minions, their reactions change. At first, they're like, "Let's beat her up, let's get her," right? But slowly, as they see the slow, sick smile on her <laughs> face, they start getting scared. They start running away from her. Momi drags her down in the sheets, wraps her around with a sheet, and starts beating her again. Minion one. Minion one. Oh my god! Before she's thrown into solitary confinement and released two weeks later. But this time, Momi is released in the yard. Uh-huh. And she stands there. No one's talking to her. She stands, and she waits. And the three minions are walking and chatting. The minute they make eye contact, Momi smiles. <laughs> and the so tough, so bad, so criminal, so cool three minions start booking it away from Momi. They're running <laughs> full speed, running for their lives. And Momi is a motherfucking track star. She chases down Minion One, the one that stuffed her in the washer, throws her on the ground, straddles her, and lifts her fists in the air. And Minion One is screaming, "Please, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't, don't, don't hit me. I apologize. It's all my fault. I'm sorry." Momi is about to punch her when a voice screams, "Come on, eh?" Which is stop. It's Eleanor.、And、the whole yard is watching. Let's stop bothering each other, okay, Mask Girl? You stay away from us. We'll stay away from you. Got it? The minion under Momi is wriggling around like a little centipede. Say okay, just say okay. <laughs> Momi gets up silently and walks off. And when she passes her cellmate, she throws up a peace sign. <laughs> and everyone in the yard knew from that day forward, don't fuck with Momi. She's unhinged. You fuck with her. She's a dog on a mission. It doesn't matter. They can throw her in solitary confinement. They can do whatever. She, the minute she comes out, your face is gonna get rearranged.、Oh. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. Like, can you imagine dealing with someone like that? That's so scary.、Uh, yeah, they're they're determined. Yeah, determination is scary. Yeah, it's scary. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, with no money, no influence, that's how Momi became untouchable, just by being unhinged. You know. And I always think about that. Like, someone wants to kidnap you, take a dump, surprise shit on the sidewalk. Honey, you're constipated. Like <laughs> surprise pee, woohoo! You know, there will probably be a TikTok video out there of you covered in pee and piss, but pee and poo. But at least you have freedom. You know, that's what I like to call America—the land of the free. 
Now the episode jumps to 2023. There's a new actress. <laughs> So there's four actresses actually that played Mask Girl. So there was the um, original Mask Girl, right? That was doing the mask part, but then the mask dancer was actually a different person. Oh, yes. Like, uh, whenever she put on a mask, it's a different person. It's a different actress. Wow. And then uh, the third one was Nana, who is the actress that plays Mask Girl. This is post surgery Mask Girl, and then now we have old Mask Girl. Oh, she's old now? Yeah, she's like 40s now. Wow, this uh, wow, this is like mm -hmm. wow, wow, wow. Yeah, and um, she's cut her hair to be a bob, and she just gets by in prison. She has good behavior, doesn't cause a fuss. She's friendly with her cellmate, just stays in her own lane. And now she's sitting in the auditorium listening to another warden go on and on about how they're the new warden and they're going to change all the prisoners. Out of all the ones that have tried in the past, it's going to be this warden, they said. And this warden is obsessed with Jesus, the Bible. She's super religious. She believes all prisoners can be saved by God, which I'm not saying um, is bad or good, right? That's whatever, right? But she is um, kind of creepy in the sense that her religion, the way she talks about it kind of reminds me of a cult. So like she's a warden, right? Mm -hmm. But she makes everyone say, I love you to her. To the warden? Yeah, like in a chant, in uniform. And as they pass her, she's like, Sarangil. And then they have to say it back. And it's just really weird. Huh. And everyone's like, she's giving cult vibes. Literally, the inmates are like, I think that she has dreams of running a cult. And that's why she became a warden. And now she's forcing us to be her fucking cult members. So it's under this new warden that Momi's like, okay, well, maybe Jesus can help me escape. So all because of a letter that she received. Momi had not been receiving any letters since the day that she got in prison. This is the first one she's ever gotten. And it's not even a letter. She opens it up and it's a printed out digital article about um, is violence genetic? It's got Mask Girl's face on there. And Mask Girl's confused. She's trying to flip through the article, read about it. And she's like, what does this even mean? And in the back, in Sharpie, someone wrote, it's your turn to feel what it's like when your child is completely broken. Bitch. That was the day that Mask Girl starts plotting her escape. She read that article every single second of every single day for, the full, for a full week. She knew she had to get out. There was no other option. She took fabric from her job as a, like a sewer in the prison, and she was going to use that to climb over the edge of the wall. And in the end... Wait, why, why does she want to get out? She thinks her daughter's in danger somehow. Oh, someone's targeting her daughter. Yeah. So she's trying to go out and protect the daughter? Yeah. Huh. She cares. I think she cared, but like, how could she reach out to her daughter in a way that wouldn't just complicate her daughter's life more? Escaping the prison is probably not the top way to <laughs> yeah. reach out to your daughter. Maybe she won't reach out to her daughter, just watch her from afar and make sure nothing. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of what? Yeah, but like, I think that she didn't not reach out, not because she didn't love her daughter, but I think that she genuinely like imagine also how her daughter would feel if she is growing attachment with this mom in prison. But it's like this whole life crisis of like, why do I feel any sort of affection for someone who killed people? It must be very confusing, right? So in the end, she's got help from her cellmate, and it was arguably an okay plan, but it fails. She ends up falling from the wall before she can cross over and is thrown in solitary confinement. And for a moment, we think that Momi has given up her dreams of getting out there to save her daughter from whoever is after her kid. But she comes out of solitary confinement with this weird smirk on her face, a little smile. She gets back to her cellmate. Hello, my friend. What? My friend, what's wrong with you? Something's weird about you. Did you bonk your head in solitary confinement? No, I feel better now. After solitary confinement, you feel better? Yes, because I discovered I'm a child of Jesus and he's helped <laughs> me see the light and I see the way, my friend. I feel at ease for once. And the warden is eating it up. It seems like the warden has been waiting for someone to spread her message to validate herself and what she did. She's like, that's right. I fucking changed a prisoner, okay? I did that. I need to go to heaven. Where's my brownie points, right? But even the cellmates are questioning the shit out of Momi. They're confused, like, what this changes. She keeps calling everyone my friend and smiling and talking about being a child of Christ. Anyway, they're walking away from the yard one day when they hear someone crying. It's Eleanor. What's going on there? You don't know? 
Turns out the evil bitch does have tears. Her daughter needs a kidney transplant and she turned out not to be a match. Momi walks up to Eleanor. Ani, fuck off. Ani, if you don't want to die, fuck off, okay? What's your daughter's blood type? If I'm viable, I would like to give your daughter my kidney. What? Wait, Eleanor is the mean mm -hmm. prisoner. Yes. She's crying now mm -hmm. because her daughter is sick and needs a kidney. Yeah. But I thought you say she has a lot of money. Yeah. I guess no one's a match. No one wants to give them a kidney. B okay. <laughs> yeah. Weird, right? What? What's her blood type? AB Young. AB. Oh, what a relief. My blood is also AB. The oh. next day, Eleanor runs to Momi, so happy, hugging her. Momi, you're a match. Oh my God, this is a miracle. Thank you so, 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 so much. How could I ever thank you? No, no. There is nothing you can do to repay me. I think she's trying to get out super early on good behavior, or she's trying to use this kidney transplant as an opportunity to escape. I'm not sure, right? Because she's got to be transported to a hospital for this kidney transplant. So you're telling me two of the toughest people in prison. Yeah. Eleanor yeah. and Mask Girl are both like so very into their kids. Yeah. But they're like so tough. Yeah. They're like, okay, I'll do anything for my baby girl. Mm hmm for my baby girlies yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay at another one of these religious meetings the warden is pulling out all the stops even bringing in volunteers to talk to inmates many of them have a favorite and a lot of them love kimomi she's the one that's been saved the one that's been seen the one that has changed is on a new path the path of enlightenment you know and as the meeting comes to an end momi gets up from her chair with that religious smile I don't know. You watch the drama. There's a religious smile that she does, okay? And it is... Hey, can you do it? It's like a... <laughs> and then a voice calls her from behind. Momi! Momi turns around, but she can't really register who this grandma is. It's me. Nathan's mom. Karen. You Nathan's go, mom? The coworker. Remember the one that shot Cynthia? The co-worker there's mom that she killed yeah the co-worker she killed nathan but the thing is momi thought that she was dead because she vividly remembers putting her into the car and pushing that car into the lake and drowning her oh but what she didn't know is after she ran off nathan's mom karen woke up in that car because she was knocked out grabbed her shotgun blew out the window and swam up okay and now she's had a ton of plastic surgery to change her face Okay, yeah. why, why did she do that? Well, it, uh, let me explain. She says, you got my letter, right? You never responded and I was saddened. It seemed like you didn't care to see how I was doing. That day that I crawled out of that lake, I was born again. Father God gave me another life to live so that I could punish the devil of a bitch. And that's been my whole life now. So Karen gets surgery the minute that she's out of the lake to find Momi away from the police. So this is at this point, Momi hadn't been arrested. Okay. Right? And she redoes her whole face. She gets a new ID. She founds, finds a place to live, all to hunt down the mask girl. But then a year later, mask girl is all over the news for turning herself in. And she goes to church and she prays, is this really your will, God? And Karen thought about moving on, but there was just... There's no way, you know? So out of curiosity, she went to see if she could see, you know, she could find Momi's mom. And there she saw Mimo. She knew it was Momi's kid from the get-go. She could see that bitch in her, she said. So she concocted this plan where she was going to be Tokbuki grandma. What? She was going to set up a tokbuki stand right there where Mimo goes to school, lure her in with free tokbuki and get closer and closer to her, being this kind, sweet, nurturing grandma, the mother figure that she never had. But behind the scenes, she was the one ruining her. Remember Mimo, Mimo's first school? Mimo's best friend's parents found out that she was Mask Girl's daughter and refused to let their kids play with her anymore? That was the start of her original villain story, right? Well, one day the moms were eating tteokbokki at the stand and tteokbokki grandma, Karen, mentions, you know, I heard something scary recently. Wow. Uh, excuse me, ma'am? Oh, sorry, I was just talking to myself. Uh, another um, customer was telling me how Mask Girl, do you guys know Mask Girl? Serial killer. Has a daughter that goes to this school right there down the block. Mask Girl? You know the one that wore that sexy mask and killed like three people? I heard her daughter is in the first grade here.
First grade? That's our kids' class. What's her name? Oh, oh man. Um, man, it was uh, it was something kind of strange. Something a little... Kim Mimo? Mimo? The parents freak out, and now Mimo has no one. She actually ends up going to Tokbuki Grandma, tears streaming down her face. Oh my god, Mimo, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Grandma, the kids, they're all bullying me. Okay, you listen carefully now, okay, Mimo? If someone ever makes fun of you, you have to punish them twice as hard. Oh my god! It's the only way. I don't even oh. know how to do that. You've got to make sure that they never do anything like that ever again. Mima had to move away, and she cried to Tokpoki Grandma about how she has to switch schools. It's okay. I'll go visit you often, okay? Just leave me your new address. Mimo jumps up to give her a big hug because she is the only caring person in Mimo's life. But she's ruining Mimo's life and she doesn't even know. Now, remember Mimo's girlfriend slash best friend, the ultimate betrayal? So we thought that Yeti told her friend who the bully was, you know? It was the grandma. But we get a flashback and she just used it as a distraction. She said, Mimo's mom is... And the girls are anticipating. And she slaps their arm away and starts running off. Oh, But the grandma gosh. was there in the alleyway. And she said, I know who Mimo's mom is. And she tells the girls. Yeah, and her little evil master plan worked because Kim, Mo- Kim Mimo was all alone. For good now, truly alone. And she waited for that knock on that door. She smiled and then she opened it. Oh my God, Mimo, what are you doing here? What's going on? Grandma. Oh my God, get get in the house. Come on, my Lord, how did you even find... Oh my goodness, what happened? Dude, so Grandma became the... Yes. The caretaker? Oh. Karen tells Momi all of this in the prison and Momi is shaking with anger, hatred, shock. Her body is literally shaking. Karen goes... Karen gets up close and personal and says, it's time you feel it yourself. What it's like when your kid is completely destroyed and disappears. Before Momi can react, she bows and says loudly, I will keep you in my prayers, miss. Who said this? Karen. Okay. And as she's walking off, Momi tries to attack her. She barely does anything, but good old Karen dramatically throws herself onto the ground and clutches her Bible. And she's like, you got to stop her. She's going to kill someone. She just said she's going to kill someone. She's Nathan's mother. She's Nathan's mother. And Karen says, I think she must have mistaken me for someone else. Please don't let her leave. Please, you have to. She just told me she's going to kill someone. Momi looks crazy. She's being held back by all the guards. I mean, all the work that she's put in, the progress. It seems like this incident was going to set her back quite a bit. Even after she's thrown in her cell, she's banging on the door, begging the guards, please, you have to stop her. She's going to kill someone. Not a single soul believed her. Except Eleanor. Eleanor wants her to be happy and healthy for the kidney transplant. Come on, you can't be stressed. Your cortisol levels are through the roof. I'll help you trap down that lady. You know, in exchange for your fucking kidney. So she gives Mimo her mom's number. Mimo's, Mimo's mom's number, the grandma's number. Mimo didn't have it. And this would be the easier way, easiest way to ask about Mimo. And she's like trying to tell her mom to like warning her if Mimo has any sort of older woman in her life, like you need to do something. But at this point, Mimo is already full on living with the Pukki grandma. And Momi's mom wants nothing to do with her. She hangs up on her. And she says, don't you ever call back. If you actually care about Mimo, don't you dare call. My mom has been tensori. Oh, look at that usage of Korean. She's been nagging me that my Korean has gotten worse since I haven't been using it much. She's been urging me to go to one of those Korean classes on Saturdays in person at like a local church. You know what I'm talking about, okay? And I used to hate those lessons. I felt like I never learned anything from those lessons. We used to do like vocab um, flashcards. What am I getting out of that? But I've been learning Chinese recently with um, Rosetta Stone and I started picking up some Korean lessons here and there. It is so easy on Rosetta Stone. It's so intuitive. And Rosetta Stone is obviously made for trying to learn a new language like myself with Chinese. But even if you need to brush up on a language, it's awesome. Like it just hits a part of my brain where I feel so satisfied after their lessons. They don't focus on memorizing tedious like translations of words. They really want you to pick up the actual words in that language. So I'm a super visual learner. 
when I was first using Rosetta Stone to learn Chinese, they would show me visuals of all the words I was trying to learn, like water, juice. And then we transitioned into being able to ask for water at restaurants or order juice when I'm out with friends. And I end up remembering the words for a lot longer. Like it's ingrained in my brain because of that visual connection. I mean, there's a reason that it works. Rosetta Stone has been the trusted expert for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages offered. Korean, Chinese, Arabic, Polish, Spanish, French, Italian, those are just a few. And with the true accent feature, I just feel more confident that I'm on the right track. You can even download lessons for when you're offline, which is perfect for being on a plane or on a train. And right now, with a lifetime membership, you can get all 25 languages. It's a $299 program, but with our code, you can get it for just $179. Even if you learn just one language, that's incredible. But if you learn two, like I'm doing with Chinese and Korean, it's amazing. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a limited time, our listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 40% off. That's $179 for unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 40% off at rosettastone.com slash baking today. Momi is so distraught, she can't even stay healthy for the kidney transplant, and that's worrying Eleanor, you know? Her daughter, need, her daughter needs a healthy kidney, not a stressed out one. So she calls up her good buddies on the outside. And she's like, get a picture of Mimo healthy and happy. How the fuck do we track her down? Who's calling who? Eleanor. She's calling her little minions on the outside. Okay. Who said anything about tracking her down? Get a random girl her age with the same hairstyle, throw her in her school uniform, and take a fucking picture. So she gets a picture and gives it to Momi. We didn't want to get too close, so that's why it's taken from a bit far. Now I understand, Eleanor. Thank you so much. Of course. I'm glad I could help. I know the surgery is tomorrow and I just want you to feel a little bit more at peace, you know? Meanwhile, Karen is acting like the perfect grandma to Mimo, buying her clothes, cooking her home-cooked meals every single day. She even briefly mentions Nathan, that she had a son, but he's very far away right now. And now, Karen is looking to buy some camera gear. She's also buying some ropes, some duct tape, some um, stove tops. Yeah. What? Yeah. What's stove top? Like a gas cooking stove top, portable, like one of those camping ones. Oh, okay, what could she possibly do with that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. She goes back home to check on Mimo. Mimo! Mimo's not in the bedroom. Mimo! And then a door slides open. Happy birthday to you. It's Mimo holding a plate of homemade brownies with a candle on top. For grandma? Yeah. How did oh. you know it was my birthday today? I saw your ID in the drawer. Grandma Karen looks confused, but she blows out the candle. Grandma, I just want you to know, you're my real grandma. So please, you have to live a long, healthy life. So Mimo now, it's like a really good Yeah, kid. she just needed a mother figure. Oh. That night, when Mimo falls asleep, Grandma Karen puts on her jacket, grabs her kidnap stash, and goes into the secret compartment of her house. So behind a bookcase, there's this underground cellar. And apparently the home that she bought used to be a fermented seafood restaurant, so they had an underground bunker to ferment all the food. Like Parasite? Yeah. The next morning, Karen preps a huge breakfast for Mimo. The soup is filled with sedatives. And while eating, Mimo says, Grandma, I think I'm going to start working. Work? For what? What do you mean for what? So I can earn money and buy you clothes and send you on vacation and buy you all the yummy food, of course. I'm going to make sure that you live a long, healthy life. Karen looks a little hesitant, but she snaps back into it. Hurry and eat, and don't forget to drink your soup. Mimo smiles and drinks up, but her real grandma is still out there thinking of her. She's trying to find a way to figure out what the hell is going on. So she calls oh, wait, around. the real grandma cares. Yeah, she's calling around asking about, she remembers her granddaughter saying something about some tteokbokki grandma stand. She's asking for addresses and someone gives it to her from the local church. But she's still very confused on like how tteokbokki grandma has anything to do with this. But there's a knock on her door. Tteokbokki grandma's door? No, on real grandma's door. Oh, okay. And it's Yeti. The friend, the best friend. Remember, Mimo's best friend? From, oh, okay. The last it, school, yeah. Yeah. What are you doing here? <sighs> Grandma, there's a lady called Topiki Grandma, and I think something is seriously wrong with her, and she's hurting Mimo. 
The two rushed into a taxi and grandma was able to get the address to Tokpuki grandma, but she had no idea if Tokpuki grandma was actually bad. So they give the taxi the address and as they're zooming there, grandma is saying, wait, so you're telling me Tokpuki grandma is the one that told everyone that Mimo's mom is mask girl? Yes, I wanted to find out who started the rumor so that I could tell Mimo that it wasn't me and they all said that it was some grandma that used to sell Tokpuki. Which I thought was weird because it always seemed like that grandma was very kind and fond of Mimo, so why would she start the rumor? Meanwhile, Momi is taken to the hospital to donate her kidney. And apparently the hospital isn't allowed to know that she's donating her kidney to the rich lady's daughter, so she has to go in plain clothes with plain clothes officers. She has two female officers in plain clothes with her in the private room while she's changing into her hospital gown. Could I get a Bible, please? A what? A Bible. <sighs> Do you really need a Bible right now? Yes, this is a rather big operation. I would like to be close to God. <sighs> One of them puts the handcuffs back on her and says, can you handle it while I go get a Bible? Yeah, no problem. One of the officers leaves to get a Bible and, me and Momi is handcuffed. I have to use the restroom. You can wait until she gets the Bible. I really have to use the restroom right now. <sighs> okay. They unhandcuff her and handcuff her to the bathroom like um, railing. Mm -hmm. And she's sitting there. How do you expect me to use the restroom handcuffed like this? Sorry, not my rules. Well, I feel humiliated. You know, I volunteered to give a kidney. Okay, not my rules. Fine. I don't want to give my kidney anymore. Why should I have to withstand such humiliation when I offer to do something nice for someone? Call the warden. I want to go back. The officer toys with the idea that technically it will be her fault that Momi backs out. So she undoes the handcuff. And right when she turns around to give Momi some privacy, Momi grabs the lid to the toilet and slams it against her head. She jumps out the hospital window, landing hard on the concrete. But like somehow she's got the same genetic makeup as the fucking Hulk because this lady survives. She gets up, she steals a random car in the hospital lot and starts driving. And like a lot of people leave when they're briefly bringing someone to something. They'll like leave a phone as the navigation in the car. And there's a phone. So she dials her mom's <laughs> number that she's Kidding memorized, me. okay? Mom, please don't hang up. You have to listen to me for once. Mimo is in danger. Mimo's in danger? What do you mean? Nathan's mom has been stalking Mimo and I think she's been making her life miserable to do something to her. Maybe kill her. Nathan's mom? Do you know anything about her? I think she's with her right now. I'm on my way to see her right now. You're on the way. You can't go. Please, you can't. It's so dangerous. You have to call the police instead. If you, knew, if you know the address, give it to me right now. Grandma gives it to Momi and she stops the taxi and forcibly pushes Yeti out because now she knows it's dangerous. So she's like, you cannot come with me. Yeti gets pushed out, but Yeti just grabs the next taxi and she memorized the address too. So she's <laughs> heading over there. It's about to be a family fucking Bro. reunion, okay? So everyone cares about Mimo. Mimo so much. Yeah. Wow. So Mimo's the biggest victim. She wakes up tied up in the underground cellar and Karen is trying to get the camera to work, but it's not turning on and she's reading the manual. <laughs> Mimo's got duct tape on her mouth and she's putting two and two together. She's devastated that grandma, the one that she treated as a real grandma, was just another person to betray her. You're awake. Mimo, you're probably wondering why I'm doing this. I want to say I'm sorry. This isn't about you. It's your mother's fault. Do you know how my son died? Your mom butchered him, cut him into pieces. And I, really want to I didn't really want to have to come this far, but you came to me. And I wanted to rub it in your mom's face, so I went to her prison. And let me tell you, she just had this peaceful look on her fucking face. She looked so peaceful. She even had the, had the audacity to tell me that she found salvation. That lying slut. Salvation? <laughs> I've lived my whole life in hell. I'm sorry. I just want to tell you, though, one last time. You've done nothing wrong. But if you want to blame someone, you can blame your mom. Karen walks over to the camera and presses around, and it finally clicks on. There we go. Now we can show your mother your last moments. Mimo's like grunting behind the tape. What, you've got something to say? Mimo nods. Karen takes off the tape. What is it? Grandma, it's so cold. Grandma Karen puts her jacket on. Grandma, please, I'm so sorry. Please let me live. I shouldn't have ripped it off. Grandma Karen forces the duct tape back on her mouth and starts cooking up a stove. She's trying to kill her with carbon mm. monoxide poisoning. And then the doorbell rings. The police are there. We got a call that you're holding a little girl captive in here. 
<laughs> well, sir, you can look around all you want, but that's not true. He looks around. There's nothing because she's in the hidden underground cellar. Mm. Nothing. But as he's walking out, he hears someone scream, help. And he leans. It wasn't just one policeman? No, one's in the car. Oh. And he leans into the car and says, I'm going to do another search. I'll be right back. Why is he going alone? Yeah. That's weird. So he's about to walk back in, but he gets a radio on his thing that interrupts him. Mm -hmm. So let me give you a little flashback to what Momi's doing, okay? She's driving as fast as possible to Karen's house, but her car runs out of gas. She ends up hitchhiking with a woman who stops on the side of the road, and she's got this wound on her face, and it's bleeding, and she looks really messed up, Momi. Because Momi. Okay. she, like, jumped out of a hospital building. Yeah. And the woman looks hesitant to give her a ride, and she explains that she and her husband got into a really nasty fight, so she needs a ride back home. Now the lady is like, okay, fine, get in. So she's out here singing, the lady that's driving, dancing in the car, making this a road trip, talking to Momi about how her and her husband also fight. Her, her husband's also a useless deadbeat. But the song cuts. Breaking news. Mass girl, a known serial killer, has escaped while receiving treatment from the hospital. She has short hair, five feet, five inches tall, and has a wound on her face from her escape. If you spot this woman, please immediately alert the authorities. The car is now dead silent. And the driver <laughs> refuses to look over. She's gripping her wheel. And Momi looks at her. Excuse me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> How can I help you? Actually, if you could just stop, I'd like to get out now. Okay. She stops the car and Momi gets out and runs into the woods for a shortcut to Sharon's, Karen's house. And the driver calls the cops. Oh. Karen's work, working faster though, okay? She's putting more duct tape on Mimo's mouth. I should just get this over with. It's because I'm too soft, you know? My heart is too soft and weak. But what goes around comes around. This is a sound and fair punishment. This is after the cop left. Yes. So okay. we actually see the cop get a radio around this time. Mm. And it's saying fugitive on the loose near your area. Because mm. she just called. The driver just called. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mimo's real grandma arrives at the house first. And she asks the taxi driver, can you please just wait? Um, I'm just grabbing my granddaughter. But he refuses. Why? It's too late. Karen. Oh, he's like, I got other calls, lady. Oh, okay. Karen is setting a charcoal stove on fire. She's going to kill her from carbon monoxide. And Karen lights the grill and walks upstairs. But in the kitchen, she runs into Mimo's real grandma. What the hell are you doing in here like a thief? Grandma hears Mimo scream. What did a child do to deserve, deserve something like this? Karen pushes her down, ready to kill her. But Yeti runs in. Grandma! Mimo's grandma uses this as a chance to throw herself onto Karen and she's screaming, she's downstairs, go get Mimo, she's downstairs. Yeti leaves, runs downstairs. Mimo is already passing out. Yeti runs to turn off the stoves. They're both coughing. She rips off the mask. What the hell are you doing in here? Mimo, I'm so sorry. I only lied to you because I wanted you to like me. I'm sorry about lying about my family. I'm so sorry. And I never spread that rumor about you. I swear on my life. I know, I know. They hug it out, but they're still trapped in there. So they got to untie Mimo and Yeti is having a hard time. And thankfully, right at that moment, a woman appears at the top of the stairs. Dun, dun, dun. So it's actually really sad. Right before she comes, um, uh -huh. she goes into the kitchen where she sees Karen passed out and her mom has been stabbed in the <gasps> neck. Wait. The real grandma has been stabbed in the neck. And she's crying, Mom. And she says, it's okay. Go get Mimo. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So Momi runs down into the basement and starts helping untie Mimo. But Yeti is confused and she has no idea who this person is. And she's like, who are you? And Mimo, the way that she's staring at Momi, I think she kind of knows, has a feeling. And they untie Mimo and they try to help her out. But at the top of the stairs, Karen appears <sighs> with a long 15 inch bloodied kitchen knife. Now, what is this? You came to me by your own free will. Is that right? You're sick of being alive, aren't you, Momi? You had to go this far. This is all because of you. Momi shields the girls and starts wrestling with Karen, who grabs a shotgun from the corner, and Momi screams, get out of here now! So the girls run past her, only to come into the kitchen where Grandma is covered in blood. And Mimo hugs her and says, Grandma, no, please, Grandma, I'm so sorry, I messed up. And she says, Mimo, yes, Grandma, I'm so sorry. And she says, Grandma, sorry. And then she dies. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yo. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> and then she dies. Those were her last words. And Mimo, she doesn't even have time to grieve because they hear slow footsteps coming up the cellar. Mimo and Yeti kind of hide behind the door, ready to fight. They don't know who it's going to be. I mean, who's scarier, to be honest, right? Karen or Momi? Momi comes up covered in blood, and the authorities arrive. They go outside. Momi puts her hands in the air. But before SWAT can go in, Karen comes out with her shotgun. And everyone's like, is that a gun? And the SWAT team use the intercom. Hi, Momi, Grandma, put down the gun. Put down the gun. And she says, you need to feel my pain. Karen points the shotgun at Mask Girl but slowly turns it to Mimo, the daughter, and is about to fire, but in that instant, two people are shot, one by the bullet from Karen's gun and the other by the police. So we see Karen is hunched over dead by the front door, and Mimo's cries can be heard in the silent night. Her mom is on top of her body, and she shielded her. And right before she dies, she gives one smile, to Mimo and then dies and she's just crying and it's so sad because she doesn't even cry out for her mom so when it was her grandma she kept saying like hi money hi money as she's crying right but I think this is such a mixed feeling so she's just crying she doesn't even like cry oh ma oh ma like I, I can't even imagine like what that feeling is right but now everything has changed so we get a flash forward Mimo is now living with Yeti Yeti's nice parents are her Aww. temporary guardians. <laughs> She's back in school. And the hate that she feels for everyone is no longer there. And the woman, her mom, that used to appear in her dreams, the masked girl, is no longer in her dreams. But we do see her coming to grandma's house to clean out some of the stuff. And she finds cassette tapes from talent shows back in the day. And she watches while she's crying as her mom little elementary school mask girl is dancing. And at the end, the announcer asks little Momi what her dream is. And she says, I want to be someone that everybody loves. And she cries as she watches. <laughs> and that is the end of the show, mask girl. <laughs> They're good. They're good. I think the first half you did was still kind of like... Fun. Yeah, it's kind of fun yeah. and also unbelievable. Yeah. You know, it's like, what are you saying? Like, how can... How does someone just turn into a serial killer like this and just everyone so, you know... But then I feel like the last episode, it really hit home on the emotions. Yeah. Like, you see how, you know, the society fell someone because she doesn't look conventionally attractive... You know, it, it's just so much deeper than... Yeah. It, yeah. Okay, so how I saw it, right? If we want to go into like a deep psychological breakdown of the characters, I think Momi Mask Girl is the embodiment of someone who like tried their best, but that female rage is like the strongest characteristic of her. Mm -hmm. Like even the way that she kills her victims, it's like that pure female rage of being used for her body, being sexualized, being objectified, you know? Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, not being good enough because she's not pretty, mm -hmm. but she's still being objectified. So it's like that pure female rage that unleashes. She, even in prison, I think it's just like pure female rage embodied. And her whole life is that. And then for Karen, I think she falls into that very strong Korean patriarchal mom stereotype where her son can do no wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that Nathan's murder is justified, but it's the fact that she does not even see how Nathan could have played a role. Even the way that she is confronted with all the evidence found in Nathan's home, like mm -hmm. all the creepy things, she like that's nothing to her. Mm. It's nothing. Yeah. It's like boys will be boys to her. So she's like that kind of characteristic. Mimo is more of like kind of like the mixture of the female rage, but like still trying to fight and like find an ethical balance. And then the real grandma, she gives me strong stereotypical Korean grandma vibes in the sense that she wants to physically care for her children so that she does her job, but she doesn't understand that doing your job as a parent or a grandparent implies medical help as or not medical help, mental help as well. 
Mm-hmm. So it's like that pure Korean like mm-hmm. parenting style. And then another thing that I found that was very interesting because I saw people trying to dissect this show online and I just didn't like feel the end explanations that a lot of people were feeling. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of people are saying, oh, Momi dies because her whole life she was chasing prettiness. But I feel like that's so superficial. I don't yeah. think that's... And then they say... Um, Karen dies someone like said, these online um, movie dissections. Someone said that Karen dies because she spent most of her life chasing revenge, and I'm like, I don't think that's what's going on. Yeah. No, I I see it differently. Too. Yeah. Yeah. There was some Reddit that I kind of agreed with because I will say that this is a female driven story, right? So I saw some redditors saying that whether you believe it or not. Right, whether you believe in these sentiments or not, um, a redditor was saying it's the story feels more like how men, um, the only men that are depicted in this show, almost every single one, they only care about sex. Mm-hmm. The boss that she had a crush on, mm-hmm. all these managers, Nathan, every and I, people think that that's done for a reason. Mm-hmm. So these men, they just want sex. And because they create this atmosphere in society, women's lives are so thrown off balance and there's so much struggle because of men's wants. And in the end, women end up killing each other because of a problem that men have created. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but, but so, so, yeah, I agree. I don't think it has to do with like she's chasing pretty pretty yeah. because I, I think it was the last time she's saying she just want to be loved yeah what is it i want to be loved yeah i think that's what she's chasing after and people don't love anyone unless they're pretty in exactly Korea. and this is how a bunch of unfortunate event unfolded because of that yeah and ultimately she wanted to be loved right mm-hmm. damn kudos to whoever came up with this storyline because it's like done in such a very light way everything about the show feels so like ugh, what the fuck right that it's fun to watch but when you really sit there and dissect it it could be like a whole day's worth of conversation which mm-hmm. i think is the magic of it yeah what are your thoughts what are your thoughts on even like yeti is such a complicated character mm-hmm. like she just genuinely wants everyone's like good and bad yeah everyone's pretty complicated and I like it. What are your thoughts? What did you think like the end meant? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.